Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys and you ladies, this does not work. You know, I have to say, as I sit here, I, I love doing woodworking, and I don't care what I ever do, I will still always do woodworking. You know, um, if you ever watch the show, uh, Shameless, you know, um, the guy who plays Frank, he's a big woodworker. Yeah, he loves doing woodworking. In fact, that's what he does when he's not being shameless. And I enjoy this. But in the same sense, I, I, I won't lie to you, I'm envious about people like Colin Cowherd, guys that have that platform and can do and say whatever they want to say. You know, I, I, I'm doing what I can to get to, you know having my own kind of show and credibility and so forth. In the meantime, I'm supporting myself by doing what I do, woodworking, something I love. But it's so funny how hypocritical they are. I have actually said, what he's about to say, I have said that it's a damn shame because when you're in a position like him, you can say whatever you want, and nobody fact checks you. And here he is saying the same thing after yesterday doing exactly what he's condemning others for. Yesterday, actually, Justin Fields, Ohio State quarterback pro day, meant something. It was his second. Kyle Shanahan was there. They got the number three pick. Chicago's head coach, Matt Nagy, was there. Decision makers were there, and it, it, it does matter. Um, because he's gotten the most criticism of all the quarterbacks. And what's funny about this, it is kind of interesting, that of the five first-round quarterbacks, their college careers mirror their draft process. So Trevor Lawrence was the anointed son. Number one, that's his career. Well, this, this whole draft process, we don't even talk about him. He's just a given. He's number one. And then there was Zach Wilson. He was the shooting star. Ooh. Shoot, his career was like, who is he? He's unbelievable. Well, look at his draft process. Two months ago, he, be, he became the guaranteed number two pick, and there was no question about it. Mac Jones. Didn't know much about him. The more you hear, the more people are talking about him, and the more impressed you are. That was his college career. Oh, he wasn't even a draft prospect at the start of his college career. And now he's going to go top three, maybe, and that's kind of his draft process. We didn't talk about him four months ago being a first-round pick. And now the more you see, the more you appreciate. Then there's Trey Lance, which is we don't know much about him, and we didn't talk about him in college. And after his pro day, nobody has talked about it. <laughs> he's literally the invisible quarterback. And then there's Justin Fields. And Justin Fields could be hot and cold. And his draft process has been hot and cold. He was the number two. No, that's Zach Wilson. No, he's three. No, that's Mac Jones. He's four. It's a bit of a roller coaster. But where I feel bad for Justin Fields is, and this is just the world we live in, and it's not going backwards. You can lie on the Internet, and it doesn't matter. It's an avalanche. It's a forest fire. Politics, is this Mother Humper saying is that? So is he saying he that? It became truth. We're in a post-truth society. You can just make stuff up about people. He does in it. the last three months, when people come up to me on the street, you want to know what they often ask me about? When are you going to go to Barstool? Barstool at 4. I'm not going. Well, I, I read a blog that I'd never heard of printed it. Another blog that I'd heard of but don't read printed it. And then every blog had Nobody called me. Not one person. Nobody called Barstool. Nobody called anybody. It was just truth. I was going to Barstool. By the way, they do a great job. 
not, I've never even met anybody there. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. This is the Justin Field story. It's the lie. And the lie has just been, it's become an avalanche now. The Ringer wrote a story about this. Back in February, somebody mentioned to an NFL team representative at the Senior Bowl that they asserted that Justin Fields never threw to his second read. He targeted the player that was the primary receiver and had, did not have the ability to go to a second receiver. Only seven out of 225 attempts were to anybody but the number one receiver. And that just became a force fire. And then USA Today's Doug Farrar, F-A-R-R-A-R, actually went back and uh, with the Draft Network's Benjamin Solak, they actually did homework on it. And they found that Justin Fields actually threw beyond his first read 42 times for a rate of 19%, which is actually higher than Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones and Trey Lance and Zach Wilson. Oh, so it's not true at all. But it doesn't matter. A politician can say something, nobody fact checks, they agree with it politically, so it's the truth, I'll retweet it. And he just makes stuff up with Justin Fields. Oh, he just, uh, he, I mean, he literally cannot get through it. <laughs> can, can you believe he, he's, he he's doing this? He go to a second read. Oh, he did it more than all of them. And that is the world we live in. I'm not working at Barstool Sports. It's a fine company. But the blogs never called either of us and just asked. And nobody actually went to the tape with Justin Fields. So when your politician says something and you just retweet it because you agree with it, just realize 99% of the stuff on Twitter is just nonsense and an avalanche and a forest fire that has never been checked. Join Taylor with the news. No, 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 no. I, I need to. See, I'm going to see if I can find. Tory Holt. He's clip. not in the Hall of Fame. Isaac Bruce is not in the Hall of Fame. I believe they'll get in. Reggie Wayne is it in the Hall of Fame? I believe he'll get in. One of the best receivers to ever play football. And I, I'll argue with anybody. Chad. He'll never get in the Hall of Fame. And no disrespect, Julian Edelman. He he can't touch Chad when it comes to playing a wide receiver position. Not even close. Apples. Not even apples to oranges. Apples to beans. But, okay, let me throw this out. But Chad didn't run good routes. Chad wasn't no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, 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 that's so disrespectful, Colin. <laughs> Chad is one of the best route runners in the history of the NFL. History. Not when he played history. Well, did he block? No, no. All right, all right. <laughs> no, he's not going to block. What, was, no. he, was he easy on quarterbacks or was he difficult? He was easy on quarterbacks because he because played yesterday. A they were having a discussion about Julian Edelman, whether or not Julian Edelman is a Hall of Famer. He had, was having with Huj Mazada. And he was comparing him and saying, oh, yeah, he's better than uh, Chad Ochocinco. And Huj Mazada's like, I played with Ochocinco. Ochocinco's got better numbers and did more things. Yes, true. Edelman was on a Super Bowl winning team, you know, with one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of NFL and one of the greatest coaches in the NFL. That doesn't mean that that individual, per se, was better than a guy who was on a shitty team with Carson Palmer thrown to him. Carson Palmer and Andy Dalton. I think Andy Dalton was still there. But anyway, regardless, he said, well, Chad Johnson can't run routes. Dude, Chad Johnson was one of the best route runners in the history of the NFL. So pot, meat kettle. Truly, that's some bullshit. That's about as much shit as it is having to paint this piece of crap. Have a good day.